Or is it Wangles? Wangles, what's up, brother? Wangles. 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 Yo, Wangles, thanks for the follow. Wangles, what's up, man? Hi, Wangles. Wangles? Wangles. It's definitely Wangles. <laughs> I kind of like Wangles, but oh, me too. Okay. <laughs> Finally, something no one asked for. The Google Stratata, Stratigum, Trudel. Stronium, Pokemon Stadium, Salvia. It's called the Google Stadia, which is apparently the plural of stadium. I guess that makes sense. Which means that Google is using their massive burgeoning tech presence and slow infiltration of literally every aspect of your individual life to bring you games now anywhere when you're sleeping when you're going on the train when you're driving through traffic and you're about to get into another car accident because you're looking at 10 screens it sure is a good thing that google's motto is still don't be evil or else i would be really concerned about them knowing every single detail of where i am where i'm playing and how they could best market to me through adsense wait what do you mean that's not their motto anymore? Here's some of the more technical information you may want to know about Google's new streaming service. Statistics. I mean Stadia. One. Look at the shiny ass logo. Look at it. It's great. Two. It's obviously a streaming service using Google's data centers. So there's a ton of them and they use those to render the games. Basically, this removes the need for a lot of physical hardware that top tier PC and Master Race players have been bragging about for years so they can use it to play Excel games and file their taxes. Using this technology, Google can actually get phones, desktops, laptops, tablets, iPads, if those aren't tablets, graphing calculators, Samsung smart fridges, maybe even a TV, play their games. Graphical fidelity can reach at least 1080p at 60 frames a second. For some users, they can actually get up to 4K at 60 FPS with surround sound and HDR support, which sounds like a hell of a promise from Google. As the technology gets better and the service gets expanded over time, it can support an 8K format with at least 120 frames because Google data centers apparently have more hardware than a secret layer from a James Bond villain or Elon Musk. Maybe they're the same. 25 megabits per second is the actual connection speed that Google's been recommending for the service. So, you know, since Comcast is great for customer support service and is known as an extremely large monopoly in the United States, that should be no issue for most of the users of the service. Stadia had to brag in comparison to their direct competition of the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro by using the ridiculous term teraflops. This is just how much the graphical process unit can work and flop. The PS4 Pro is at 4.2 teraflops, Xbox One X is at 6 teraflop, and the Stadia apparently can do 10.7 teraflop. Cool. That seems like way more. I guess. There will be a custom 2.7 gigahertz hyper-threaded x86 processor with AVX2 SIMD. Those letters could just be lies. I think it means it's really fast. There'll be 16 gigs of RAM. Surprise. It also is going to launch with a bunch of sweet dev tools. This includes the standard tools that you've ever seen on every single splash screen for every single video game that you can't skip through because they like to punish us. Havoc, Unreal, Unity, FMOD, CryEngine, and about 20 other that are on that giant screen right there. There you go, look at it. Cross-platform features have been enabled. The actual hardware that you need is a Wi-Fi based controller that Google sells. This controller looks insane. There is a button to share content directly to YouTube, and it looks like it's right by the start button, which means that there's going to be about 500,000 YouTube videos a day on accident. Also, there's a built-in microphone so you can use Google Assistant. Some questions like, hey Google, please help me actually look at this frame by frame and beat the game. It takes the challenge out of it instead of beating like a real man, or woman, or toaster, or whatever. Also, this has the infamous Konami cheat. Everyone remembers this one. It's so cute and totally isn't disguised as a way that Google can get in as a humongous corporate monster into gullible nostalgic fanboys to buy something that looks worse than any game controller I've ever seen in my entire life. 
There will be USB controller support on the PC at launch, but not for anything else. So, sorry if you have a DualShock. Sorry if you have an Xbox One controller. Google wants you to buy their shit. A very interesting, unique feature brought to the Strata is a machine learning based style transfer tool. It looks cool. Look at that video. You can throw an image in, changes all the textures. Seems interesting. Don't know how practical it is. But Google is using their army of machine learning robots for something besides world domination, so that's cool. You can have share state saves through a URL that you can generate that it's kind of like a URL that you share with everyone. I'm not really sure how it works yet. The demos seem kind of vague. It just kind of seemed like something you could copy and paste to someone. And then if they have the service, it opens. They have the same stuff you do in the same exact conditions. They're working on making some games that use that feature specifically. Still seems a little strange to me. Maybe it'll be badass. Could do some scary games and shit. I don't know. Apparently there's another feature called Crowdplay where streamers can have viewers join a lobby and multiplayer games within this Salvia, Strategy, Stadias, Pokemon Stadium, Stadias, Stadia. <sighs> also something interesting is that apparently Google is having a Stadia Games. It's a first party studio led by Jade Raymond, who's pretty famous for doing stuff with the Assassin's Creed franchise. So there'll be some specifically unique games exclusives that are made for the stadia platform apparently there's like a thousand dev kits that are out there so maybe we'll see something very interesting however there is a lot of hype in this event and not a lot of hands-on experience for mass consumers to understand there's a reason they did this at gdc so the game developers could see it they're trying to develop the tools However, it seems like it could be a little bit far-fetched for what they're saying. Digital Foundry actually did a video looking at the specific latency in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It was running at 1080p, 30 FPS, and has around 166 milliseconds to late time. This roughly translates to about a third of a second, and it could be kind of major depending on what games those are. You know, if you're doing your 360 no-scopes in Call of Duty or something, I don't, I don't know. I did get a comment reply on YouTube that I thought was interesting and a little concerning. Take it from someone who has beta tested Project Stream or Stadia with a 1 gigabyte, 100 megabyte connection at 9 millisecond server ping. The input lag is real, very real. I tried it from different locations around the US while I was traveling. Video quality would vary depending on the connection speed. But the one thing I experienced, no matter what, was input lag. It's around half a second, and that's not an exaggeration. It was so bad that I could not use a mouse to play. I had to use a controller, so it didn't feel so bad. You can see in another part of the video where the guy is playing Odyssey. Watch the part where he uses the mouse to play. Play it in slow-mo. You can see the lag from when he moves the mouse and when the camera moves. A fast-paced game like Doom is going to be ass with the input lag. Some popular competitive multiplayer games will never be popular in Stadia because of this. The biggest complaint with online multiplayer is always a lag. Now add in half a second of input lag, barf. Well, that seems bad. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I believe that this is something where we just need to wait and see what they actually have at E3 this year, because it sounds like it's very interesting bleeding technology using there are servers and data centers. However, it will have a lot of things hinging on the success of it, such as input lag, download speeds, data caps. I, I don't know about you guys. I have one terabyte of data cap, and I'm almost always going over my data cap because Comcast hates me. So that's the Google Stratav of them, the Google Stalagtite. The Google Strabellium. If you like this video, I demand that you do the following things at this very second. One, like the video. Two, subscribe to my channel. Three, follow me on Twitter. Four, my numbers get high enough that I can finally get my bikini Patreon and calendar off the ground. I have all of the underwear. I have all of the shots planned. The only thing that I need right now is your help and your support so we can get it going soon for 2020.